This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. A vast universe exists within and beyond our reality. What we realize with our five senses is but a tiny fraction of all that is real. Welcome to the World Beyond Radio Show. I'm Joe Wegent, your guide and advocate as we remove the blinders of our everyday lives and experience together all that exists out there in the world beyond our world. Good morning, folks. We've got a great show for you tonight. We are going to be talking about dousing today and for most of us uh, that basically means just uh, what your uncle may have done with a y-shaped or a forked twig looking for uh, a place to dig a well but it can be so much more than that and uh, we've got a great guest today we're going to be talking to Mary Buchanan Mary Buchanan uh, currently lives in Rockport Indiana and she is the president of the Tri-State Dowsers. Uh, she got into dowsing about 20 years ago when she needed to find some water lines or some power lines and had a person do some dowsing for that. And then that kind of started her journey from there. So, Mary, welcome to the show. Thank you. So, you've been doing this for about 20 years and you got into this by having to look for uh, something underground. Can you explain that to me real quick? Well, basically my friend was there and we were looking for, I can't remember if it was a water line or a power line that was underground. And I mentioned something about a dowser, you know, if we only knew somebody that did that. And he said, Oh, there's nothing to that. And he just grabbed a couple of coat hangers and cut them and made me my first set of rods and, set, and showed me how to douse. And we found the line and, and nothing flat. And after that, I thought, well, but I always thought, well, dousing is just for water. You know, that's the only thing I ever thought it could be used for until I got into the group and found out that you can use dousing for just about anything you want to look for or any question you want to ask. It's a pretty fascinating little trick. So... You know, as a kid, I I saw some people doing some dousing, and of course I tried it out too. And you know, you can walk around the yard with a with a stick and watch it bend down toward the earth, but unless you're actually going to d- uh, dig a well, there's no validation or or verification of what you're doing. So, you know, just walking around in the yard about ten minutes of that kind of gets kind of boring. Yeah. Where, yeah. So, whenever you're uh, dousing for things underground. Uh, what is that like whenever you get that validation? Well, you, you, there are so many different dowsing tools. That's another thing I, I never knew about was how many different tools. But, of course, if you're outside, basically you'd probably use your rod, the dowsing rods, the L rods. And some people use a pendulum outside, and some people use what's called a bobber, which is just one uh, rod, basically, but it's real flexible with a little handle. But... If I'm asking for something, and again, everybody's different, but when I ask for something, my rods usually cross in like a yes answer, mm-hmm. but, uh, or they'll open up wider. So when I'm looking for geopathic stress lines or fault lines or the Hartman or the Curry grid, they usually open up, and then that can also give you the direction of the line, which is what we were working on last night at our meeting was doing our homes, because when these geopathic lines come into the house, if you get two negative ones that cross, and particularly under your bed, they're not going to cause, give you a disease, but they weaken your immune system because when you sleep at night, that's when you're recharging. But if those lines are weakening you, it'll eventually lead to an illness. And they did have done all kinds of surveys in Germany and found that 
every person that had uh, died of cancer on this one street had been sleeping over a geopathic stress line that were crossed, you know, the bad lines. So now what's the difference between those geopathic stress lines and ley lines or what the Chinese call dragon lines? Geopathic stress lines can be caused by natural things like a, an underground fault, underground flowing water, um, negative, the, the water, if it's called what they call black water or dirty water, it, things are decaying in it, and this is water comes up, it causes negative energy. But geopathic stress is usually anything of the earth, and Hartman and Curry grids can also be geopathic stress lines, you know, because they're basically natural lines. Ley lines are man-made lines. They may be a, if the, oh, like, um, oh, in England there are so many of these little, I can't remember what you call them, but pillars of rocks that they had set up. They used the hinges? Point, uh, yeah, and they call them something else, too, but I can't, dolmen or something. But they will lead a ley line, like a path that's been followed religiously, like from, say, a church to a cemetery, or where they walked a, a line to there. These cause energy lines in the ground, plus they make the lines and build on them. They always doused before they built a sacred site or anything. They would douse and get that good energy where they built that site. So like Stonehenge is built on a sacred site. Church. Well, I want to talk more about that whenever we come back from our break. Folks, you're listening to the World Beyond Radio Show. To this hour, we are talking to Mary Buchanan about dousing. Stay tuned. We'll be right back in just a few minutes. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. How would you like to be able to read other people's minds? Well, the next best thing is here. When you know how to read a person's name, you know how the person thinks, feels, and behaves. Each letter in our name holds a key to unlock our true essence. Our name contains both our gifts and challenges in this lifetime. Nemology Science discovers personality secrets hidden in the placement of the letters of our names, including the first and last impression people remember about us. Sharon shows us how to interpret the arrangement of letters as outlined in her book, Know the Name, Know the Person. Sharon Lynn Wyeth created Nemology Science after 18 years of research and testing her theories and has supported thousands of people around the world in understanding themselves and others better. You'll enjoy Sharon's unique teachings as she shares her system to learn the gifts behind your given birth name. Even if you don't like your birth name, there are jewels in this book. If you're thinking of changing your name, ready to name your child, or wanting to get along better with others, this is the book for you. If you'd like to improve your relationships and change your life for the better, get the book today, Know the Name, Know the Person, or visit www.knowthename.com. That's www.knowthename.com. Take a step back in time and discover old Florida cuisine at Marsh Landing Restaurant in Felsmere, Florida. Enjoy delicacies such as frog legs, gator tail, catfish, and swamp cabbage, or enjoy the more traditional cuisine such as hand-cut Angus steaks, ribs, and seafood. Join us for breakfast with a southern flair featuring sweet potato pancakes, biscuits and gravy, and much more. Planning a party? Marsh Landing's private dining rooms can accommodate groups from 8 to 80 people. While you visit, enjoy the historic pictures, artifacts, and stories that line the walls. Marsh Landing is truly a unique experience. Marsh Landing Restaurant, 
44 North Broadway in historic downtown Felsmere, or visit marshlandingrestaurant.com. Marsh Landing, Old Florida cuisine at its best. If you're a seeker, don't miss the inspiring book, Shamanic Awakening, Between the Dark and the Daylight. This remarkable work chronicles shamanic counselor and indigenously trained dream decoder, Sander Cochran's 35 years of experience with diverse wisdom keepers throughout the Americas. Sandy's initiations across the British Isles, Turkey, Greece, and Egypt, combined with her knowledge of symbology, psychology, and myth, influence her dream blog and workshops. Sandy offers private readings, Sacred International Journeys, a meditative CD, and her book, Shamanic Awakening, to encourage you as you navigate your earthwalk and create a deeper connection to yourself. Find this and more at her website, starwalkervisions.com. Welcome back to the World Beyond Radio Show. I'm your host, Joe Wegent. And this hour, we are talking to Mary Buchanan about dowsing. Now, before we left for break, Mary, we had uh, you brought up a, a couple of things I have never heard of before. I, I know ley lines and I've dealt with ley lines before, but I've never heard of uh, Hartman lines or Curry lines right. and geopathic stress lines. And you said some of those can actually be man-made. I, I, go into that for me, please. The ley lines are the only ones that I um, think are man-made, and they are from ancient times, and so many of the religious areas are there. They built their towns around a, a good energy area. Um, and our speaker a couple months ago was talking about, I believe, somewhere in Europe, said they can't even build unless they douse and make sure that that is a clear area to build a home. Hmm. The Curry lines and the Hartman lines are electromagnetic lines that run underground. The, the Hartman lines run north, south, and east, west. The Curry lines are diagonal, and they go from northwest to southeast and northeast, or southwest to northeast. They kind of run diagonally across the Hartman lines. And when you get two negative ones, crossing that is detrimental to your health and you don't want to be sleeping on that now i've i've had experiences where um friends and clients have had children who have gotten chronically ill and uh you know we've looked at the house and determined that there was a ley line running through where the bed was and once the bed was moved the illness uh faded away right and a lot of times if you've got a little one that will not sleep in their bed or, you know, uh, they always come in and, and want to crawl in bed with you or maybe you'll even be laying on the floor asleep because they just won't sleep in their bed, that's the problem so much of the time. If you would just check for lines and move the bed to another area, they'd be fine. Now I've I've dealt with ley lines, but I, I've I've never actually uh, dealt with the the other ones that you're talking about. Yeah, and, and so, there are so many different ones. There's you have your geopathic stress, of course. You have your Hartman and your Curry grid, and then you also have interference lines, which come from cell towers and electric lines and phone lines, and then you know um, there are, are vortexes caused that there's positive vortexes and negative vortexes. And a lot of times you can, you can look at a tree, and when you see a tree that's got a real twisted trunk, it's sitting on a vortex. Hmm. Now what, and if it's a, like a, a negative vortex, would not be good for us, but there are some trees like your stone, tree, stone fruit trees like peaches and plums and cherries, they love that. And I, have, I took a picture last night and showed it to the group of my plum tree that is sitting right beside my uh, electric box outside, the meter in the box, and it is just twisted big time, and it is always full of plums and just as healthy as can be, but that trunk, is it looks like a corkscrew. 
Isn't that something? Yeah. But now, and then also ants and bees and and other insects love the negative areas. Cats, if you have a place in your house where your cat lays, that's usually, you know, its favorite spot. That'll be a negative area. Dog won't won't get on that spot, but a cat will love it. And dogs and cats are funny. Cats yeah. don't like Reiki, but dogs will love it and they soak it up, but cats can't stand it. <laughs> really? I've, I've, I've tried to yeah. give Reiki to two different cats and I got bit both times, so... They're a different thing, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but they they will usually lay on, you know, love it. And then some of your animals, too. I can't remember the larger animals. I think cattle and horses probably don't like them, but there are other larger animals that do, and I can't remember which is which. But it's really interesting because our um, member that raises bees, he talked mm-hmm. last month about the bees and how he places his boxes on negative uh, lay, no, geopathic stress lines, basically, negative lines. And the bees produce better. The, he sets the hives there. They don't have as many diseases, and they produce way more honey. Now, I read a few, uh, probably a couple of months ago, that if you watch cattle feeding, they will line up north and south because that's the energy line. And if you know, they might be just meandering about, but when it comes time for them to eat, they'll all line up north and south. I don't have any way of, huh. you know, determining yeah. the validity of that, but it was an interesting article nonetheless that kind of reinforces the idea of energy lines. Yeah, the animals are, you know, they can detect that, and they, they'll they avoid it or go to it, whichever their preference is. So it's interesting. I don't know, I don't, had not heard about the, the feeding, but I don't have access to cattle either, so I can't really check that out. Exactly. But that sounds interesting, and it sounds probably true, too. Yeah, that's what I thought, too, that it might be more true than not. Yeah. Yeah, I believe it. So tell us about the Dowsers group. How long have they been around, and what do they do? Our group started, next year will be 20 years old. Our group started in 1998 by a lady named Adele Cottrell. And mm-hmm. she had probably the, I think, I'm not positive, the first health food store in Evansville. And she just died last year at the age of 101. Or maybe yeah, was she was a this, sweetheart. This year, wasn't it? And she was such a good lady. She was instrumental in bringing so many different things to our area, Reiki and different healing modalities and just anything that was off the grid for, you know, the average person. But she was a super lady. And then the other one... Our other charter member was Dwayne Walter, and he has worked for years with the Historic Society in our county. He's very interested in Abraham Lincoln, and he has doused for, he loves dousing for graves and finding lost grave sites, and he can usually even tell you the sex of the person that was buried there. And he still attends our meetings pretty regularly when he can. He's had some health issues, but, you know, it's really nice to still have a charter member around. And next year Hmm. we'll celebrate 20 years as a club. How about that? Now, do you go out on site and try to douse for certain things when people ask for it? Not so much. I get so many calls from Kentucky wanting somebody to come and douse for water. Well, we don't travel. We we really don't have the the facilities and, and that you know the members that would want to do that. But I usually just tell them to if it's for water. Most of the time, you can call whoever drills the well, and they're going to know a dowser. Mm-hmm. But we don't do anything like that. If it's something really local, now somebody called me the other day and, and wanted to know if we had anybody that would come to his house and check for stress lines because he was afraid he had some going through his house. And he sent me some pictures of the rooms he was interested in, and we doused those, so I'll get back to him. But he lives close, so I may just go down there and, and check his out. But you can do that as remote dousing. You can just draw a picture of your room or take a picture of your room and douse it remotely and mark the lines on it. So I did that already, but I may go to his house because he's not too far away. But we so, don't travel. So whenever you go on site, what? how do you uh, go about doing that? What's your protocol? Well... We can douse the exterior of the house, and you can look for, um, you know, the different lines coming in. 
I usually just ask for detrimental health lines or negative energy lines coming into the house instead of going through each one separately. And then you want to know what direction it's coming from. And you can take a piece of copper, you know, maybe 18 inches, two feet long, and make like a wicket out of it. And you want to get in the center of that line and, and push it down and, and cover that line. And that's supposed to help block the line. But if you've got it crossing and you have any options at all, like it's crossing under your bed or somewhere at your desk or somewhere you are a lot, move the furniture, you know, and just get it off of it. But then I do go in the house and go around the walls of the house, too, and try to, you know, block it that way. But I, I think your first option should be to move the furniture. If, but a lot of bedrooms, you don't have too many places you can move it, you know. Exactly. To get it, you know, you might get it off of one side of the bed, but then just put it on the other side. So, so explain blocking a line with a wicket. Go into that for a minute. Well, it's, it's just a copper rod, and it's about, like I say, 18 to 24 inches. And you try to find the center of the line, and then outside you would put it at the foundation or the lowest level of your house. If you have a basement, you'd go in the basement and try and just do it against the wall down there. But um, then I just bend the end of it down like a croquet wicket and stick it in the ground. But I like to take a little shovel or something and, and uh, open up the ground so I can get it under the ground and cover it up for lawnmower purposes and weed eaters and things. You don't want to run over it, but, you know, get it underground. But that is a blocking technique for lines coming into the house. Why or how it works, I don't know, but, you know, I do use that. And then you can lay the little rod in the house across where the line's coming in through also. But you have to do it with intent. You know, I'm, I'm blocking this line. You don't just throw it out there. Right. And, and that has a lot to do with it, too. Now, how wide are these lines, and how far underground are they? Well, they come up, you know, from different distances. I'm not sure about the, the Curry and Hartman grid. Your, your underground water and your fault lines, um, you know, it can be different depths. The Curry lines, I don't know whether they come from the, cur from the core of the earth or how far down, but, you know, they're electromagnetic lines, and they, but at the distance down, I'm not sure. But the curry lines, and that varies, too, how far apart they are and how wide they are. And you can douse for that. You can walk and, and your rods will open. But some of the curry lines are 10 feet apart, and they may be, oh, two feet wide, three, you know, two, three feet wide, or they may just be a few inches, like 10 inches wide. It just, you know, and they vary from continent to continent and place to place on the earth. Or not, it's not all the same. But you can pretty well walk and get the grid if you just walk your, you know, diagonal, you know, walk across the yard and put little flags. You can lay a grid out. And I know I've got one coming through my front yard because I've got a huge area out there between three trees that is just nothing but ants in the yard. No place else, just that one area. I mean, the ground is just like powder from the ant hills, And right diagonally from it is a evergreen that my neighbor had and it was a christmas tree they planted it out there after it was one of the bald christmas trees so you can plant it after the season they planted it and i have never seen an evergreen get so big and it is right in line with the ant hills and i have maple trees that have twisted trunks all out there in that area so i without even dousing i'm pretty sure there's a line coming through there and it's probably underground water because that's what the ants and the bees and everything love. Well, how about that? The now, can you, you know, can you direct good energy lines into your home? I don't know. You can move water lines, or Dwayne has done it. We've seen him do it. Um, as far as the <clears> curry <throat> lines, I don't know. And, you know, with natural lines, you don't really, I don't really want to mess with them. You know, I want to block them from coming in, but I don't know about pulling positive ones in. I mean, you can do a blessing. You can, you can ask and do this with intention. We, you know, Raymond Grace is a famous dowser, and he does so much stuff just with intention. He just asks, okay, do this, and it's done. So, but he's got a lot more powers than I do. <laughs> hmm, but, you hmm. know, there are some people, and he's, well, we're going to get back to that in just a second. We have to cut away to a break. Folks, you're listening to the World Beyond Radio Show, and we are with Mary Buchanan today, 
Stick around, folks. We'll be right back in just a few minutes. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. There's a legend shared by many indigenous cultures of a time when the nations were cast to the four corners of the world. Each nation was given a body of sacred knowledge that held a different portion of the truth to preserve. True reality could not be known until all the nations reunited, combining the information. If a single one was missing, the world could not be reborn and darkness would prevail. The Science of Magic Radio is dedicated to reuniting the sacred knowledge. With the understanding, none of us has all the answers, but together we can open new perceptions and possibilities. Through our combined vision, the world can be reborn into a place where darkness no longer prevails. Join me, Gwilda Wiecka, and the Science of Magic daily on the Exxon Broadcast Network, xzbn.net, or visit us at thescienceofmagic.net. Gibbs A. Williams, Ph.D., is a practicing psychoanalyst, supervisor, researcher, and author in New York City. Much of his life has been dedicated to understanding nature and the uses of meaningful coincidences or synchronicities. His radical and original non-Jungian, non-mystical, non-magical theory of synchronicities illuminates much of the fog surrounding this challenging and perplexing topic. His ideas and manners are fresh, presented in a style that is both entertaining and highly informative. He is also an expert on crisis intervention specially focused on violence reduction for the police and citizens, mastering anxiety, frustration and stress without the use of medication, and effectively preventing and treating heroin addiction. Dr. Williams can be contacted at his email address at gwwilliamsny11 at aol.com or visit his website at... Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7, 365. True healing must address four levels, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual, for us to live joyful and productive lives. We tend to treat three of the four, leaving the spiritual languishing. If you're tired of the same dysfunctional patterns cropping up in your life, soul balancing is for you. Trixie Phelps, owner and founder of Soul Balancing, is a naturally gifted energy healer trained in numerous esoteric forms, including shamanism. Trixie has created a powerful modality that safely and effectively clears your energetic field. A soul balancing session can remove interference, heal trauma, and restore your hope. Contact Trixie for a life-changing long-distance session today, www.soulbalancing.world.
Welcome back to the World Beyond Radio Show. I'm your host, Joe Wegent. In this hour, we are talking to Mary Buchanan and discussing dousing. Now, Mary, when I learned how to do dousing, it was almost uh, exclusively with a pendulum. And I never learned how to do dousing on, uh, like, doing earth dousing like the way you do. It was always uh, the kinds of dousing about energy in the human body right. or... Uh, Asking questions about uh, things that might be good for or bad for my body or my health or, you know, dousing for chakras or something else like that. Aside from the earth, what other kinds of things can we use dousing for? Well, there are a multitude of things, which I never really realized either until I got into the group. But you can check for, you can use dousing to clear negative energy. You can use it to look for residual energy or or ghost or activity in a home and try to clear that or send them on but uh, lost graves drill wells they look for oil there's map dousing where people check a map for good sites to go douse in person for oil and you remove psychic ties hauntings it's there's just so many different things, just about anything you can think of that, you know, you want to clear up or is easy enough done with dousing if you can put your mind to it. The main thing is getting out of your own way. Uh, if you Basically, you ask the question in your head or verbally and then let it go and just watch the rods and just try to pretend like you're talking to someone and that someone is the rods and you're waiting for the answer, not... That's why I always second guess myself because I have these. I said, "Do I actually get this, or is that a preconceived notion that I already had?" So I like to. I would rather douse things that I don't have any idea about. That way, I I don't feel like I've put my thoughts into it and gotten the answer that I was expecting. But map nope. dousing is, you know, that's interesting to me too, and uh, people use it to hunt treasure we have one man in the group that hunts treasure all the time and he does a lot of map dousing before he goes out on site now i have picked up on ley lines um that have run through houses that have had some supernatural and paranormal activity right. and i mean you can almost uh, for me, it kind of feels like a, a highway or a, or a subway train or something. You could just feel the energy just flowing through that area. And, right. you know, I tell people, you know, from my experience, spirits like to travel on that because they're gaining energy as they move. They do. What, what are your thoughts on that? I think you're perfectly on top of it there because they, uh, and fear, fear feeds them and, they, especially a negative line, they are going to pick up on that. They need their energy, and they'll go anywhere they can go to get that energy. And you have way more abilities than most, so you can probably feel it or sense it without ever having any kind of a dousing tool. Mm-hmm. Which, no. you know, they're just a tool. I mean, the, inter the, the answers are coming from us, <laughs> but if it's someone like me that doesn't really have any intuitive abilities then you know the tools are really really handy with you you can just walk in a room and feel it but that's not most of us so well i know i'm a little bit uh different we've yeah. I've known that for a while <laughs> so you know whenever i'm talking about dousing in my classes and when i'm teaching reiki or any other kind of energy work classes and i the way I explain dousing is that it is a magnification of your body's own response to the information in the universe around you. So if you're asking a question, your subconscious mind is picking up the answer. But since we oftentimes don't want to listen to our subconscious mind, the dousing uh, equipment helps to provide that answer for us. So it's not like it's a... I teach that the dousing equipment, whether it's a pendulum or rods or whatever, it's not a separate entity, and it's not getting the answers. It's just magnifying no. your answers. Now, what are your thoughts on that? That's exactly right. You can lay the, the pendulum on the bar, and it's not going to jump up and start giving you answers. It's you. Exactly. Everything's energy, and it just you're just transmitting that energy to your dousing tool. 
and without you, the tool is nothing. And and with most people, without the tool, we we can't do it. So uh, there are very few. But as people become more accomplished, they they even do what's called body dousing. And I know you know what it is, but mm-hmm. you know they can just ask about standing. You know, you don't want to take your dousing rods or your pendulum in the store when you're looking for vitamins or something. So you can hold the you know the vitamins up to you and do a thing called body dousing where you program it in where you may kind of lean forward for yes and backward for no a little bit and you can do that kind of inconspicuously in a store mm-hmm. but um and pick out foods that you know would be good for you know is this is this a, a healthy good food for me or is this a good vitamin for me to take do i will, will this benefit my body in any way and you know you'll get a yes or a no so when you've got 16 kinds of vitamin B sitting up there, you might want to check them out and see. Some of them might not benefit you in any way whatsoever, and others may be just the one you need. So go That's into body dousing out. in a little bit more detail. Explain explain body dousing. Well, you, I'll just take vitamins, for instance. You go in, you pick up a bottle of vitamins, and you can hold them or just kind of hold them to your chest over your heart area, and you just, you're just asking, you know, is this the best for my health and benefit. And most people will kind of, you just kind of start to lean a little bit forward or you'll, you'll tilt a little bit backward. For me, forward is yes and backward is no. But like I say, everybody's different and, and it might be just the opposite for you. But you need to ask, you can ask too, you know, what's my yes, what's my no? And when you lean, you'll know what it is. But you know, can do it with any item or a food item. And you know, you can pick up junk food or something healthy and hold it to you or pick up a, a soda or a glass of milk and hold it to you and see what's, you know, is this beneficial for me or non-beneficial for me, you know, and you will we'll go forward or backward. Then there's also, I've never got had any luck with it, but they use their fingers sometime, you know, put one finger over the other and push down. If you can't, it's like kinesiology. If you can get the finger to go down, it's, you know, you're weak with that item or if the stays strong, it's, a good item for you and then there's a you can make a circle and with your fingers and try to break the circle with your other hand there's different ways but basically the body dousing is just leaning forward and backward the other with hands and things are i guess it would be more like kinesiology i don't know Mm -hmm. where you're just weak or strong with something now I have taken my pendulum into the store and used it at the uh, the melon bin at the grocery yeah. store to see which oh, ones yeah. were ripe enough and which <laughs> ones were not really going to be ripe at all. So yeah. that's that's kind of funny. Of course, you get into a little bit of a problem when you do that because next thing you know, you have a line of people behind yeah, you, you saying, "Do mind, do mind, do mind." <laughs> <laughs> right. So what? Aside from you know using your fingers and making rings with your fingers or using your body back and forth to uh, determine dousing, what other kinds of tools are there that you can use to uh, gain information? The main ones are, of course, the first one was what they called the Y, the Y rod or the Y stick. They would just take a, a Y shaped branch off a tree and hold it to find things. Now they make them out of materials. There's, of course, the L rods or the dousing rods, which is two L-shaped rods that you carry, and some people just use one rod. There's the pendulum. There's the bobber, which is just, like I said, one little rod on a handle, but it's more flexible, and you just hold it, and it will either go up and down or back and forth for yeses and nos. Um, Oh, gosh. We had... One of the members brought in a, a new, it's basically like one L rod, but it's different too, and it's called a Magna something or other, I can't remember, but several of us have one of those now, and that's the man that has the bees, and he uses that for all his dousing, just that one rod, and it is really nice. I mean, it it turns, and the people that developed it, I believe, were oil people, and they sell it. I've never found it online, but he bought them somewhere. And it is a really sensitive and good rod. And, you know, you can find your ley lines or whatever you're looking for really quick with it. And, but, you know, they're just, and the the man that I said does the treasure hunting, he's got a couple of little things that he made and he found in some book that was ancient. And that's what he uses for his treasure hunting. And it's 
just a little tool with a curl on the top that he holds in his in his between his fingers. It's a tiny little thing, and he uses that for dousing. I don't know exactly what it does, but you know he's shown it to me a few times, and he had it with him last night, and it. He said that's what he uses when he map douses. You know, I've I've seen people spend um, upwards of forty dollars for a, uh, a a decent pendulum. Oh But yeah. I, I have I have read that heck, if you've got a button and a string, you can use a pendulum. I've seen people take their necklace off and use their mm-hmm. pendant on the necklace as a pendulum. Hang a washer on a string. Anything with weight. It's just something with weight hanging on a string. So, uh, but yeah, they've got all kinds of things at all different prices. Uh, a lady had um, that we were watching one of her seminars, and she had her dousing rods for sale. And it was two L rods in a sleeve for seventy dollars. And I thought, wow, well, yeah. <laughs> But I had a, I don't know what was supposed to be so special about them, but I can't see how you could get the seventy dollars for that. But okay. <laughs> it didn't look suspiciously like a coat hanger, did it? <laughs> no, it was a little thicker. I think they were either brass or copper. <laughs> ah, okay. So, but they were, yeah. I, I oh my, out of my range. Now, I have several pendulums because I, I exclusively use pendulums because I, I do a lot of dousing for, for non-geolocation um, type mm-hmm. uh, things. I, I douse for myself or I'll douse for answers of, of decisions I need to make or things like that. So I have several different uh, pendulums. You know, Some of them are solid copper. Some of them are made of crystal. Some of them are made of stone. So it, it's um, they're also a lot easier to carry around with you than a set of right. other rods. Yeah, I'm a pendulum hoarder, too. I have to have one of everything they make. So, But then I have my one that I fall back on. You know, they're the ones that they call the healing pendulums, which are made basically <clears> from <throat> sacred geometry, the Egyptian-type pendulums. They have several of those that they found in tombs and things. They've used pendulums for as far back as, you know, you can go. And they're supposed to be a healing pendulum. But it's just whatever works for you. Mm-hmm. And and anything basically will work for you, but you know, I have my favorites, and and I'm sure you have yours. Yeah. Now you know I, I have, uh, you know, read in the the Bible, especially in uh, Genesis, where they almost every chapter is you know he dug a well here and he devoted it to this and whatever, and he dug a well there and he named it that. And yeah. you know, not you and I both know that they didn't just uh, take a stab in the dark yeah. and trying they to find water. Didn't walk out in the desert and stick a stick in the ground and find water. No. <laughs> no, especially since if you see how those wells were built, they were like uh, thirty feet deep before the water started, and you had to take stairs down into there to get them. Right. So yeah, it, there was some dousing going on there. I I do believe. Oh sure. Well, we're going to take a short break here and come back in just a few minutes after after some announcements. You are listening to the World Beyond the Radio Show. I'm your host, Joe Weijin, and we are talking to Mary Buchanan on dousing. Stay tuned. We'll be right back in a second. The Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN TV. For more information on the X Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi Fi, you can still listen to the X Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X Minus One, Dimension X, 
Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. I am Dr. Carl O'Helvey, founder, president of a new cancer foundation focusing on evidence-based physical, mental, and spiritual interventions, including natural cancer cures, prayer, meditation, affirmations, nutrition, and other related holistic cancer prevention and cure modalities. These are used in cancer education, research, and financing care. I ask for your help to continue this important work by donating at www.holisticcancerfoundation.com. Wouldn't you love to know the secret to everything? I'm Dr. Kimberly McGeorge, and on The Secret to Everything, we will merge the practical with open investigation into all realms of the mysterious. We will talk to cutting-edge alternative health practitioners, those who inspire and motivate you in business and life, and of course, we will share stories of the paranormal, conspiracy, and cryptozoology. You will transform because of the frequency I carry, the frequencies my guests carry. Life may never be the same after you listen to this program. For the secret to everything is for you, the listener, for those who desire more in every area of their lives and believe that it can still be found. Listen and discover the secret to everything.com. Little children aren't the only ones afraid of the dark. Millions of soldiers return from war zones with PTSD, anger, frustration, fear, and loneliness, much of which surfaces during the darkness of the night. You have the chance to change the lives of these American heroes. Songs and Stories for Soldiers.us provides free MP3 players for these men and women. With a list of 3 million songs in 16 different styles, 100,000 audiobooks, and 30,000 old-time radio programs, every veteran can find something to soothe and comfort them at no cost. All our players contain an 8-hour audio program designed to help veterans fall asleep. With 1,500 plus vets now participating, it's our goal to deliver 10,000 audio players this year. Go to our website at Songs and Stories for Soul. Soldiers.us. Help us help a veteran make it through the night. Welcome back to the World Beyond Radio Show. I'm your host, Joe Wegent. You have been listening to the World Beyond Radio Show when we bring you the very best in all the new age, paranormal, and supernatural uh, news around the world. Our show is produced and brought to you by the ever-growing leader in New Age Paranormal, Alternative Health, and Supernatural Programming, the X-Zone Broadcast Network, and Relmar McConnell Media Company. At their headquarters and master control in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. To learn more about the world beyond, your host, or a wealth of other amazing shows and hosts, please go to www dot xzbn dot net to in- contact me or to inquire about being a guest on the world beyond please email me at joe Wegent. that's joe w-e-i-g-a-n-t at xzbn dot net or you can visit my websites www.paranormalpeace.com or www Reiki Choice, that's R-E-I-K-I, choice.com. This hour, we have been talking to 
Mary Buchanan, who is the president of the Tri-State Dowsers Association. And they can be reached at their website at tristatedowsers.org. That's tristate, D-O-W-S-E-R-S, dot org. Mary, it has been great having you on the show today. So where do you see the future of dowsing? Do you think this is going to become more prevalent and more accepted in the way people uh, operate things? Well, you know, it's it's been kind of poo-pooed by us for years. You know, oh, it's it's witchcraft, it's crazy, it's this, it's that. But in Europe, they've used it more like a science for years. And but a lot as they make fun of us, also our our army has used it. They in Vietnam, they used it to find tunnels and and underground mines. They have used it. For many, many years, of course, they won't admit it, but in the 60s, there was a dowser. I think his name was Vern Cameron. They ha- they were testing him, and he shocked them all because he not only found every one of the U.S. submarines out in the ocean, he was map dousing, he also located every Russian submarine. And at a later date, South Africa wanted him to come and look for min- help them find their natural minerals. But the CIA wouldn't leave, let him leave the country because they said he was a security risk. Ha, ha, ha. So, you know, we've used it for years, and some people are just so accurate with it, you know. It's like to find every submarine in the ocean, and he couldn't leave the country after that. Well, the government also had a uh, remote viewing program that lasted for right. 25 years as well, and they were spying on the Kremlin and doing all other kinds of things, too, that's only just now become uh, public awareness. So Yes, and then at the same time, they were probably making fun of it. Well, I'm not sure that the guys in the programs no, and no, uh, no. R- but running I'm the programs. No, 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 the news media, all that can't be done. That's crazy. But, you know, they've done so many things that or in the metaphysical realm, as far as I'm concerned, and would never admit it. But they've used dowsing and remote viewing and all these other techniques for years and years and years. I agree. And like you said, in Europe, it's been used for, for centuries. Oh, yes. Those cathedrals guess- that they built in Europe weren't put there by accident. They didn't just uh, you know throw stones out in the middle of the street and say that's no. the place where we're going to put it. I mean, they know where they were putting that for the best energy for that cathedral. And it, same with Stonehenge. And then I, I don't know if it's true, but I read it in one of these magazines that they were going to move Stonehenge. And I thought, you've got to be kidding. You know, it's been there for all this time, and it's on a particular spot for a particular reason so but that was a british um something on the web and they were talking about you know help stop them don't let them do this but who knows they don't have a lot of sense anymore but in the you know in the 1500s queen elizabeth i had a bunch of german miners come over here to teach dowsing so that they could find the best veins and where to mine Mm-hmm. So it's always been like over there. <laughs> That's where, you know, they are just really good at it. They know what they're doing, and they use it all the time and don't think a thing about, you know, oh, this isn't real. I think North America has a very uh, uh, dim and narrow view of certain things in the metaphysical realm. And I, I think if you look in parts of Asia and Europe, you're going to see that that those things that we uh, uh, dismiss as irrelevant have been a, a major part of the way they do business for, for thousands of years. Yes, yes. It's been, you know, the they wouldn't think about drilling a well or building a house or setting a, a church somewhere without checking it first. And in the, I'm sure, I mean, I've heard that, you know, the old timers always used to douse for where to put their house, where to put their wells. So I have a, the well on my property that that goes to the barn. The water is perfectly fine, clear, beautiful. The well I drilled for the house, which was not in line with that when I, we used to pick the spot and, and drilled a well, has iron and is the hardest water in the world. The other water up there, you know, if I would have gone 
50 feet over the other direction, I'd hit that vein and would have been fine. Hmm. So, but I didn't douse then. <laughs> didn't know now anything you about had, it. You had mentioned before that Raymond Grace is a douster who can do some amazing and incredible things. And I've heard yeah. he has taken wells like yours that are uh, hard water or have high sulfur or high iron or something like that. And he has cleaned the well out using dousing alone by basically right. by using a pendulum. Yes. He, he is can do it, all kinds of things. <laughs> is it simply a, a, um, a matter of his conscious mind not getting in the way of what he wants to do is a complete pure belief system or do you think he's really blessed with some kind of special power that that uh, you know evades the most of us he has taken many many courses and many things like the silva method monroe uh, techniques and so he has gotten himself to a point where i think he could probably do about anything he probably has a lot of natural ability, but he has learned a lot, too, over the years. He is a well of information. So, so if somebody were to... say it's a combination of the both. Yeah. So if somebody were to go and uh, take a standard metal coat hanger and want to start to douse, whether it's on a map or whether it's in their yard or, or something like that, is it simply a, a matter of convincing yourself that it can happen and that it will happen and that it does happen or is it all about intention about wanting to make it happen how does somebody who's wanting to start doing it really get into that program where they can start achieving results well you just you have to ask the question right because dousing is very literal you know a uh, one one lady with uh one man was talking and he said he was giving a seminar and he asked the rods to show him north and they pointed straight south of him and he asked again show me north and they pointed straight south you know at somebody in the audience the man in the audience his name was north so <laughs> you know you you might want to ask show me the magnetic north or show me this or that and just start practicing with things that you know the answer to and try to get out, you know, just ask the question and then wait for the answer. Don't try and con concentrate on it too hard. I think that's probably the worst thing, and I'm guilty of it too. You know, okay, show me a geopathic stress line. Show me a line. Show me a line. Show me a line. Just ask it and start walking and let them, them do the work. But to start out, just ask something. Ask some questions that you know the answer to and get your yes and, and ask first ask show me a yes and show me a no and see how they react and it takes a while to get the energy flowing you know you're it probably some people will just take off first first question just and go but it takes a while to get used to what they feel like and watching the movement and as you douse they're going to get you're going to get stronger and the energy is going to get stronger and the rods will move better or the pendulum will move faster you know you'll get your answer coming to you quicker Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of time and, and practice and, and staying out of your own way. I know whenever I have uh, shown people how dousing works with a pendulum, I will, uh, I'll show them what my yes and my no is. Right. And then I'll say, okay, is my name Sally? And it'll go directly to no and just start swinging back and forth. And I'll go, okay, is my name George? And it'll still stay there, but is my name Joe? And all of a sudden it'll start spinning yes very, very quickly. And, you know, I, it's quite obvious I'm not doing it with my arm. And so, right. you know, people are just blown away that that can happen. And you know, I, I explain to them, it's just simply the subconscious mind knows the truth already. You just have to listen. Yeah, and every answer is out there somewhere. Yes. And, uh, you know, don't do it for gain. You know, you do it for the good of something. You know, don't do it for greed. It's not going to work. You're not going to get the lottery numbers. You're not, you know... <laughs> You, you need to be working for the good of mankind just for the good period. Not out of greed, but out of love. So do you have anyone uh, other than this guy uh, that lives near you that you're going to be doing a, a particular dousing event for? No, I don't, I don't go out really. and I'll, I'll do things remote on a map, but um, I don't travel and, and go do it because... It's just, you know, not feasible for us. Everything well, Mary, it life. has been a pleasure having you on the show today. And I hope that we have uh, opened our listeners' minds and eyes. And uh, 
We, uh, folks, you have been listening to the World Beyond Radio Show. I'm your host, Joe Wegent. Please tune in again, and I promise you, we'll talk about something interesting when you come back. Thanks a bunch, folks, and have a great day. Thank you.